I am Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Adria Coral Supreme 670SL. So as we walk around the vehicle, your Adria flip key opens all the lockers. And in here is where you took the vehicle up. So you've got your mains connectivity point, which you took up like so. Always hook the vehicle up first and then the site. And then what you want to do is just allow a little bit of lead through here and then you can shut the door. And you've also got the TV point, 12 volt and two USBs there as well. To lock these loggers, what you need to do is push the key in, turn, and then push the lock in. When it's shown red, it needs to open. If it's not shown the red tab, it's locked. So your awning, your aura light and your two fridge vents and your cassette toilet there so ensure that the blade shut on the inside of the toilet and you will pull the yellow handle, pull it out got some wheels so you can wheel it to your waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside the toilet block then empty, remove the cover Tip the 90 degrees, press the button, tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, if you put some water in and give it a rinse and tip out again, then if you're using the liquid form, a cap full straight into here, it's going to go back near the vehicle. If you're using the new form, which is the tablets, you slide the blade back, open the blade, you put a pint of water in, and then you drop one sachet, which is the tablet, into here, and it's good to go back into the vehicle. Once it fixed back in, at the back you put your large garage you put your garage which has got mains electric and 12 volt it's heated and you've got these tethering points here so you can tie your load down and just behind here is your external shower so you've got your hose there that hose just clips into that brass fitting there and then make sure the pump's on and you can either have hot or cold water obviously the hot water will only work if you've had the boiler on and that's great and you do have your own unwinding handle in that box there and your carpets come to the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light your rear view camera this is where the back panel's been strengthened to take a bike rack should you ever fit one in the future and on the back at the bottom you've got reverse and parking sensors. Put the same large garage door to the garage. Your waste is there, but it's controlled from a switch beside the passenger seat, which I'll show you in a second. And in here you put your LPG, so this is where your gas bottles live. So you can fit two six kilogram bottles. You'd always ensure that the bottle is turned off when travelling and strapped in using the straps behind. It's a left hand thread so no need for a spanner on this, just hand tighten and then turn on and off at the top of the bottle. Then you've got a little crash sensor here, so this little yellow tab, if that ever pops out it's just a crash sensor so what you need to do is just push it, hold it for 10 seconds and it'll reset the crash system so it allows the gas into the vehicle. your vent for your Aldi system so it just allows all the fumes out fresh water intake so I'd go and buy a hose pipe put the hose pipe in there until it fills and it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel how much water you're carrying at any one time and then that this is lockable as well and then should you not be able to get the hose pipe to the vehicle this is a little 12 volt point here so there's a 12 volt submersible wheel pump supplied with the vehicle you put your pins in there you put the other end into there and then you drop the pump into the aqua roll or bucket and it'll suck water into the vehicle instead of having a hose pipe Here you have your diesel filler, so go to the main ignition key. Fill with fuel. As you know, you've got the Ad Blue as it's a new Euro 6 compliant engine. It's a 19 litre tank, the Ad Blue, and it'll come on between the temperature and fuel gauge and it'll look like an exhaust light. 
just simply needs topped up when the light comes on otherwise the vehicle can go into limp mode or fail to start so just top it up you can buy it at the pump or you can buy it on the barrels here you've got your tyre pressure so five and a half bar all round which is 79.5 psi your engine battery lives underneath the floor here and just here you'll notice that there's a switch this switch is for the waist which is just behind here so you go at the top which opens it you go at the middle which does nothing and you go at the bottom so it's the top to lock it middle does nothing and bottom opens it and drains your waste off so you drive over a grid on the way out of your site and drop your waste water and obviously in the winter it's very important that you drain that off as well and then your bonnet release is to the side of the dashboard then underneath the bonnet to the left hand side you've got all your liquids so you've got your screen wash this cover lifts off and allows you to top up your power steering fluid and your radiator fluid then you've got your brake fluid your oil filler and the dipstick which is just down here and then should you ever need to jump start the vehicle you'd earth off here and then there's a contact here for the positive which is just there sometimes the covers on top of it and you will need a key or a screwdriver to put in the tab and lift it up that's your positive there your wave plate so you go off this forget about this one go off the adger one so it's 3650 if you were to put a tow bar on and tow your train weight which is the motorhome whatever you're towing can't exceed 5.6 ton so once on board you've got your main 12 volt control panel if you are hooked up you'll have this little symbol down in the bottom left hand corner to say that you're on mains electric and all three pin plugs will work if not you will just get 12 volt off the leisure battery depending on how full of charge it is so you've got your on off here which turns the vehicle on and off below you've got your battery status so this is when you'd use the little round wheel so it's telling you your vehicle battery is 14 volts your leisure battery as it shows the back of the vehicle is 14.3 volts obviously that's charging now take this hook about and it'll give a true reading and it's saying that we are currently using 0.58 of an amp off that leisure battery below you've got your water so it's saying that you've got 50% of fresh water 0% of waste you've got a back button there and then at the top You've got your lights, so this is when you'd use the wheel again, so you turn on and off, and that's the interior lights. Then move it across to the outside light, and you can turn on and off, and that obviously is the light out there. Moving further down, you've got the temperature, so I'm saying it's 30 degrees inside and 23 degrees outside. And then you've got your time, so you can scroll through your settings, time, date, screen, settings all in the control panel there and then the pump so you can have that on or off so you'd have it on if you're using taps toilet shower exterior shower if you have no water on board then you wouldn't have the pump on because you'd it's like you'd burn the pump out because there's no water so you'd just be frying the pump constantly which isn't a good thing and then next to it they are fitted with the Aldi heating system which is a wet system so you turn on and off here then you go to the menu, so you've got the thermometer in the house, this is the temperature of the vehicle heating wise, so you can go plus and minus all the way to 30 degrees, but at the moment it's so warm that we don't want the heating on. And then below you've got this, the shower head, this is hot water, so you can go half, so it's full bar, which is 60 degrees of heating your water. So plus and the minus, so off. 60 degrees again if you've got no water in the boiler don't have the hot water on as it's like frying a kettle with no water in and then below you've got the electricity symbol so if you're on a site obviously you've paid your site fees you'll not want to waste your gas so you can have it on electric so you can go plus one kilowatt of electric depending on what site you're on a small RCL sites normally use one kilowatt and maybe a broad you've got two kilowatts of electric and you've got three so normally you can use between two and three in this country depending on what amperage they give you through the hookup if it's a lower site where they give you a weaker amperage you may have to use one or two if it's a super site you can use two or three depending on but obviously if you're boiling a kettle or using any a high voltage of electric equipment and it trips the vehicle out you may just want to turn the electric on the heating down slightly to stop the vehicle from tripping and then below, should it be wild camping or should it be really cold? 
uh, you can put the gas on. So gas would be used if you weren't hooked up or if you are hooked up and it's really cold in the winter to heat the vehicle or the water rapidly you can have the heating on both or the water on both electric and gas together which doubles the source and should reduce the time it takes to heat the water. You can go in the settings here and set timers and things but I'll not over complicate it. I'll keep it very simple of doing that. Underneath you'll notice is a heat exchange pump switch. So with the heat, heating system, say you've been driving for three hours or an hour or half an hour, the engine will be to temperature, it'll be warm. Put the pump switch on and what it'll do is in the colder months, the wasted heat from the engine will be transferred to the boiler which is somewhere within the vehicle. You put the pump on, it then preheats the heating system of the vehicle. So it preheats the boiler which then means it will not be starting up from cold, it will be starting up from warm which will reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle. So to operate the Avtex TV, so th this customer has opted the Avtex TV, so two, one in the front, one in the back which will operate both the same and they have added a MaxU satellite system so the Adrias come with no TV aerial or satellite system so this is an additional extra spec to this customer's particular vehicle so you turn on and off here these lights will flash until it locks onto two but as the lights are flashing if you just put the dish up by pressing this button here we'll put the dish up it'll lock on the Astra 2 and then this light goes solid the OK light goes solid and that means it has found a signal should you want to change the satellite as you move further down into the bottom of France, Spain, Portugal if you're going to take this abroad you just press and move it along but you'll probably advise what best satellite is available there's various satellite um, apps and websites so you can find which satellite's best for your location and then what you'll need to do is if you press AQT which is this button here press and hold easy finds on just press and hold And if you put easy find on, it will find the channels you're at, where you're at. But you can do a search, an auto search like so, and it will find as many channels as it can where you're located. There's a master switch just here. So make sure that hasn't been knocked off because the amount of people will have ringing on us and saying they can't get the telly to work and then they realise there's a little master switch here that they've knocked. Obviously that'll turn the standby off on the telly. But you don't really need to use that because as soon as you go up the panel it kills all 12 volt within the vehicle. It's on a 12 volt lead as well but there is a spare 3 pin plug underneath. You've got your step and all your light controls here and a handy storage space there for magazines, maps, papers, whatever you want to store in there. Coming back to here you'll notice there's a box on top which is your Adria. So you turn it on and it makes a noise. This is to connect your Bluetooth to it and the speakers throughout the vehicle. Bluetooth mode. So you can connect your speakers to it via Bluetooth or USB-C which is here. And then you've got your sound so you can connect your phones and play your music through the vehicle, should you wish. Top of the fridge, so the fridge is a big slimline fridge with freezer box. And then obviously when winter rises, and you'll want to remove all the stuff, clean it out. And then the last thing you want to do is shut the door as it forms an airtight seal. And then that's when mould and bacteria start to grow. So if you just pull this little blue pin out, keeps the door from shutting on itself. And then to operate, so you turn on and off with this blue button here, so press and hold, there it's gone off, press and hold, let's come back on. It's on A, which is automatic energy selection, so the brain of the fridge picks out what best source we have to offer. So at the moment, we're hooked up and we'll have the gas open. So if I was to take the hook about, it would switch over to gas. If I was to start the engine, it would switch over to the 12 volt setting, 
which is designed to keep the temperature of the fridge that it was currently set at previously. So the idea with the 12 volt is it's from the engine, it's not from the leisure battery, when, only when the engine's running. And you'd pre-chill it the night before, or two days, a couple of days before if you're keeping it at home, put your shopping in the night before, or if you're moving from site to site, the shopping should be nice and cold anyway. On the battery, it'll just keep it nice and cool, it'll turn it into a massive cool box, and then when you get to site, if it's on automatic, obviously it'll go back to hook up or gas, depending on what you're using. Or if you want to manually change it over, if you press the and hold the square button, wait until it flashes and use these arrows. So there we've gone on to hook up, there we've gone on to battery, and there we've gone on to gas, and then to finalise it, you just press the square button. Last key of temperature, and there you've, you've put on gas manually. Please note that on the automatic, it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas when the engine's cut off because if you want to pull into a petrol station and you've left your bottle open, obviously you won't have 12 volt because you've just turned the engine off. You won't have 240 as you're not hooked up, but it will find gas. It's programmed to wait 20 minutes because it, obviously the, it's spark, there's, there's ignition there. You wouldn't want that to start igniting in a petrol station where there's naked fumes. And then your temperature, obviously with your temperature, some people say that the five bars is too, it's great to get it going, but then once you put your shopping in, you may want to drop it down to three or four or three bars, otherwise it can freeze the shopping. But what I'd do is I'd just leave it all on automatic. So I'll just turn it back to automatic for you and leave it on there and it'll do its own thing. Just remember to turn it off when you arrive back home and you're not using the vehicle. So in the kitchen area on the hob you've got three lit gas rings. So once you've turned them off, if you allow it, them to cool down before you put the glass hood down, otherwise you can shatter it. And below you've got a Fetford oven and grill. So you've got your oven which is lit there, the back, and then above you've got your grill. You may want to remove these or wrap these up when traveling as they can make a bit of a noise. And then if you push in, put storage underneath. More storage drawers. Storage, there's your plugs. So you've got two there. And push here. So if you just push, open this, in there you've got your gas isolation taps. These are more for when the vehicle's habitation serviced annually. If there's any problems with gas, turn the bottle off just to be safe. Above here you've got your light switch, so you've got two settings on the light, two three pin plugs. And then you've got a light behind the splashback which you can turn on and off here and you've got a fan for extraction when cooking. So they're all on the switches here. Push all your lockers to open them. And they're just on gas struts so make sure that the shut securely before you travel because you don't want anything falling out. In the floor hatches, so as you walk into the door, underneath this one is your fresh water tank. So as it shows blue. So if you want to drain it down for the winter, which we advise because on motorhomes everything's plastic, pipes and tanks are plastic to give you a better payload. So this little cog here, you turn it. And you'll hear underneath, you'll just see through the chassis, if you look outside and if the vehicle the water starts pouring out, that's to open the fresh water in the winter to obviously winterize the vehicle or if you've taken contaminated water on board. Or of course, if you're not using it for a couple of weeks, you wouldn't want the water to go stagnant, so you just let it out. Like so, and then that hatch just goes back into the floor. You've got storage in this one. So at the back of the vehicle, in the steps, you've got storage. This drawer pulls forward into the garage. 
And then you've got some more deep storage there. Your wardrobe door slides open and you think, how am I gonna get into there? Pushes back so you can gain access to your wardrobe. And in here you've got your additional headrest for your fifth seat and a nail fill cushion for the bed. And these are your winter vents of some sort. And slide, you've got a large drawer there and a smaller drawer underneath. So on this model, you've got two single beds. Should you want to make it a double and sleep across width wise, slide this out, pop this cushion into here. And there you have a double bed across. Or you can make an additional small single bed in the middle should you have a small child that wants to sleep in with you, you can get another person in there. To open the skylight above the bed area, obviously on there it's shown red which means it's locked. So what you need to do is use the winder, wind it open. Then you do have a blackout blind for on an evening and a fly screen for when it's open. But always make sure all your windows and skylights are securely shut before you start driving anywhere as they're not designed to be open. So just plastic and it can be easily damaged with wind. And there's your tell you in the bedroom working. So same controls as the front one. It's an Avtex telly. So working off the satellite. But when you push it back, there's a little pin here, which is a travel catch to stop the bracket from moving. So the bracket won't move when traveling. So if you wanted to pull it out, you'd have to pull the key ring down there and pull the telly to where you want it in the bedroom. So behind this cover here, on the bed that's on the passenger side of the vehicle, lives your Aldi expansion tank. So this is your fluid tank. So you've got some antifreeze in here, which runs through the pipe and this is your heating, as it's like a central heating system. So if it shows below, close to minimum, before you start topping it up, if you always run the system up first, because when running the system up, it'll show the true reading of the liquid because it's a, it, it's like a expansion tank, so all the liquid gets hot and expands, and you'll see the true reading before you start topping it up. But if you did need to top it off, up, you just open the cap and top up there with Aldi's antifreeze liquid. But you can get this done on your servicing. Obviously, it doesn't need it done every year. I think it's there's it's so every so long with the Aldi, it needs changed. But that's where it lives in there and this is just a little breather pipe there so it gets a little bit of cold air in with the liquid so it doesn't get so hot you've got your bathroom here so so to one side you've got your shower the door opens and acts as the bedroom door as well as the bathroom door and then obviously if there was somebody in here and you are sharing it with somebody at the front you've got a little press stud there so you'd pull the press stud off slide the door and there you've got complete privacy so this side you've got a skylight which you push in pull the bar or put the bar into the groove should you want a nice ventilation and then you've got a fly screen and a blackout blind with your shower head when winterizing the vehicle so you've opened the fresh and the waste we're then advised that you open all the taps within the vehicle you'll have to unscrew this shower head from the hose and allow the hose to lie down in the shower tray. Obviously any water that comes out that pipe will go out the plug holes but the waste's already open so you're sorted. It just stops any water from potentially freezing in here and then leave the mixer tap open. Your shower doors are just magnetic so you just pull them off the magnetic catches which are designed to keep them still when traveling. And then this side you've got your toilet. So to operate your toilet to flush, you'd press the blue button at the back. 
a little flush, like so. There you are, so it just needs to pressurise a bit and there you've got a better flow of water. So flush first, which lubricates the blade. And then to open the blade, you've got a grey lever. Slide that to the right, it'll open the cassette and everything will go into the cassette. Then you'd flush after use and then slide to the left, which shuts the cassette and allows you to get the cassette out of the vehicle should you need to change it with it being full. When it is full, you'll get a light on here to indicate that it needs to come out, be emptied and be topped up with chemical. Got a little catch here to open this cupboard and you've got toiletry space. Got your light. So one's for the behind the mirror and one's for these spotlights here. You can move these. There's a few of these in the vehicle but to move them you need to pull the two little pins out so if they clip together, unclip them like so, move them along the rail and then to lock in if you just push them together. So you can move them to any, and the, the same in the lounge and the same in the bedroom. So don't just force them along, actually unclip them and move them. Toiletry cabinet, small complimentary bottle of the Bedford Chemical Blue. Some storage here and the same skylight with a blackout and a fly screen as in the shower. To open the windows throughout the vehicle, if you press the little button in on the levers and open, And then what you do is the click when they're out, so push it all the way in to bring it all the way back in. All the way out to bring it back in, sorry. And then you do have a fly screen, so to unpinch them, just pin and they'll unclip. Then clip them together, you've got a, a blackout blind as well for on an evening. Got a USB and a light. You turn this light switch off here. It's the same on that side, so you've got little rocker switches to do with the under cabinet lights. And then underneath this panel here, underneath the, the lounge and table. This is very important, this is your anti-frost control which controls your boiler water. So in the winter, it's very important that you drain the boiler off. Otherwise, if the water was to freeze in the boiler, it's not covered under warranty and it's very expensive to repair. But what this does is it drops the water automatically at three degrees. But don't rely on it because you, you don't know if it's ever going to become faulty. And if it becomes faulty and you're relying on this, then you're going to have an expensive mistake. So what you need to do is, when the diamond's across the vehicle, it's holding water because the black nib is pushed in and there's no blue button popped out down here. So if you just turn it, you'll see that the blue button's popped out and the black nib's popped out. So you would leave it open like that during the time you've got the vehicle stood in the winter. So come in with no power on and just empty this. Obviously open your waist by the switch which is just down there and obviously open the fresh through the floor then open all the taps and remove your shower head and then when you are ready to come and reuse the vehicle for the next season shut your waist shut your boiler shut your fresh shut all your taps throughout the vehicle obviously put your shower head back on go out and fill it with a hose pipe then come in put the power on put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get automatic cold water as it's drawn from the main tank underneath the chassis Go to the hot side, it will cough, split and make all sorts of noises because it's drawn from underneath the chassis into the boiler, which is pushing all the air out. And then what you want to do is pressurise one tap, do them all, and then you're good to go. But always drain the boiler down by here, by turning it the other way, button pops out, and leave it stood when you're not using it with this open. So no water can freeze, and then you shouldn't have any problems when you come to reuse the vehicle. So underneath the table, you've got a bar here. So you can lock the bar in when you push the table down. So it's on a telescopic leg. So if you push it down, you'd lock the bar in to keep the table down. And then to stop it moving, obviously pulling this bar out, the table can move. Slide to slide on the runners, as you can see. 
pushing the bar up, it'll then not move on the runner, so it'll move from side to side. But if you want to make the, make the front bed up, you'd obviously push it down and then you'd need to turn this all the way up to lock that in place. And then if you were traveling people in this seat here, what you need to do is remove the cushion and then you can pull this bar out, collapse this bar board down, which then allows the person that's sat in that seat to get the feet into the footwell. And to make the bed at the front, you'd obviously push the table down and turn that bar. You'll need the board that can be found in the garage or underneath the bed. So there's a little leg on it, which stands there, and there's a little lip on it. So here, metal lip. That sits underneath the table for support, and then just sits on this on the chair there. And then what you do is you'd pull the base cushion off here forward and put the backrest in the back and the infill cushion which can be found in the wardrobe on here and there you have your front bed. So underneath the bench seat behind the driver's seat is where you'll find your trips, so your main 240 volt trips. Obviously your leisure battery with quick release fittings on, your solar regulator which is wired there, that's again, that's an additional that the customer has added a solar panel and then you do have your 12 volt fuses so it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses with you they are just standard ones not micros and then just pop them in there should a fuse blow which it happens from time to time and then you can solve your problems and you've got your main battery 50 amp battery fuse and to make your fifth belt what you do is you get the backrest which can be found in the garage or the wardrobe Put the two locating pins in and then push this into the other locating pin. Use the base cushion back into position and obviously the backrest. You just turn that the opposite way, it'll velcro onto there. And then you do have down the sides a seat belt. So you've got your seat belt here and your buckle which is just underneath hidden away so there you have a fifth belt and then this is just to demonstrate that your water pump is working so it's pressurizing the water there and it's coming through nice and hot so now in the cab to the right of the driver you have your handbrake and then to black the windows out on the cab windows, passenger and driver, if you just slide this forward, there's a magnet on the end, slide it up and then that just connects to the door itself. So that's driver and passenger. And then if you pinch, slide these along until they meet as the magnetic end. Like so. And if it's going to be a windy night, I'd advise putting something round here. And then down here, you've got your headlight adjustment, front and rear fogs. And if you want to disable stop start, you've got your wipers with a trip computer on the end, which tells you your range, your traveling times and so on. All your steering wheel controls, so hands free. This will scroll through your, ch your channels, your audio or your Bluetooth contacts. Mute volume, voice command, lights and indicators. You've got off, cruise control at the top. You get your desired speed and push up to set. You can cancel on the end or with a foot brake and resume on the end as well to the last speed set before the engine was turned off. And then below you've got your speed limiter. So pushing up slowly will go up in ones, pushing and holding will go up in fives. And then you've got the kick down function so you can override the speed limiter should you need to. This one's fitted with a 9-speed nine speed automatic gearbox, so you go down for drive, along for manual mode, and you go up and down the gears. And then you've got drive mode here, so you can have three modes. You've got eco, power, or normal. I would just leave it in normal. There's no gain to eco at all. You've got your traction control, so this turns your traction control off. Hill descent control with it being an automatic, it just keeps basically like an engine brake keeps holds the engine back slowly. 
um, keeps the revs, stops it rolling away on steep hills, hazards, locks the door so it locks the cab doors and the habitation then your garage and your lockers are locked manually, heated mirrors, USB and 12 volt for charging purposes only, glove box and heated and cooled glove box on the top. And then you do have your temperature on the outside ring. Must be on at least fan speed one or more, which is this one here for the air content work, which is this one. And then you do have your distribution, so where you want the air to go to, face, feet or screen, and whether you're recirculating air or you're bringing fresh air into the vehicle. Third head unit, so you've got a USB there for your, connect your phone, and this does take Apple CarPlay. So if you've got an Apple phone, you can connect it through USB and you'll be able to have your screen of your iPhone on there. You've got radio, so FM, AM and DAB by skipping through here and you can press 1. And you can save up to 12 channels on there on FM or DAB. Going back to home, you've got your phone. So you go to the phone, add a phone and you want to find this device, Fate 9. 814 on your device, press pair, and then it'll ask you if you want to allow your phone to sync your contacts, press allow, and then your phone book will sync into there should somebody ring you who's saved in there. It'll come up with a name instead of just a number or unknown. Got media, which is obviously through the USB or Bluetooth audio. You can turn the screen off should you want the radio on on site, but you don't want the glare on in the evening then touch it it'll come back on and it is fitted with a sat nav so this is a motorhome sat nav and once it loads you just go so it tells you where we are we're on Crookier Bank on this A692 in Newcastle Burnham Field you click down in the three bottom corners new route address and then you'd put your postcode or your town in here and, and then you would just press so I'll just say London go to town set as destination and then it'll set as destination it'll tell you where to go when turning out of here and obviously it tells you it's 446 kilometers and it's six hours drive from here. So it's telling you to turn right when you leave the premises. And if you click on Decato here, you can put your length, height and width in of this vehicle, and then you can put your actual weight, and if you're gonna be having a trailer on and off, you can turn that on and off there. You'll notice in the door pocket down here is a tyre inflation kit as they don't come with a spare wheel so it's a fix and go kit in there. This vehicle has also been fitted with a tracker to the customer's requirements so it's an S5 Vodafone tracker and these are driver's cards so whoever drives the vehicle must have one of these on them otherwise the tracking company will ring you and ask if the vehicle is in your possession or not. Should you not have one of these, obviously you'll get a phone call, but I wouldn't advise putting them on the keys either because if you misplace your keys and your trackers on there, so just keep it in your wallet, your coat, or on your person. So whoever drives the vehicle has got one, otherwise you will get a phone call.